Hey, this is Asaf Levavi from TechnoRef.com and it's time for another viewer request. It seems to be a favorite among you because so many of you have asked for it. So I'm going to teach you how to play Chad Atkins' amazing arrangement of Dave Brubeck's Take 5. Now, before I demonstrate and show you how it goes, uh, before we jump into the lesson and break it down lick by lick with tabs on the screen and everything, I just want to mention that I've made a small, uh, a small change to the arrangement. Um, Chad Atkins plays this. Okay, which is a bit more comfortable to play on guitar, but the original melody is this. Okay, so I just changed it back to the original melody. No disrespect to Chad Atkins, I just like to play as close to the original as possible. Um, that's just my thing, my way of doing things. The rest is his arrangement, and it's an amazing arrangement. Let me show you how it goes. It goes like this. Okay, so um, as you've seen, this is a really tricky arrangement because the original composition is in 5-4 time. 5-4 time meaning that it's... Okay, it's 5. You count to 5. That's... Um, that's why it's called Take 5, and that's why it's a classic, because it's really, really hard. Uh, you need to be a genius to write a melody in 5-4 time and have the rest of the world humming it, because um, odd time signature compositions tend to be very, very confusing for the ear. And that's the genius of Dave Brubeck and this composition. Um, and that's why it's a classic. So. Let's begin. Uh, this is an E minor. The original, I think, is an E flat minor, but um, Chad Atkins, of course, took it uh, and made it into a guitar arrangement, so it's easier to play uh, on E minor instead of E flat minor. You can, you can uh, tune the guitar a half step down if you want uh, to be exact, but you begin on E minor. Okay? You just pick an open E minor twice. Um, you don't have to fret anything, you just pick uh, strings 1, 2, and 3, and the bass. So you pick bass, rest of the chord, bass, rest of the chord. Okay? And then, B minor 7. B minor 7 being B minor barred on 7, and you just take the pinky off, so you have, uh, you have all 7s and 9 on the A string. So, it's got seven on the D string as well and you pick for a jazzy sound you pick the bass notes you pick the the E string and then strings A G and D A D and G okay so um, together it sounds like this okay so it comes around three times E minor B minor seven E minor E minor 7, E minor, B minor 7, and then just E minor once, okay, and then the melody. Now, the melody 
the chord underneath the melody is B minor seven, but the melody outlines an E minor chord. So that gives it an interesting sound. Um, so you actually, you put on an E minor chord with a B bass, okay? That's your shape, uh, the, the finger shape, the finger position. You put on, it's not E minor uh, over B, it's E minor over B minor seven. That's the context of the, the melody. So the bass note is B, and you outline the E minor chord, seven on D, seven, uh, excuse me, nine on D, nine on G, eight on B. Okay, and this, uh, the, the B octave, because this is a B note as well, the B octave um, is being played as a flam. It's played one right after another. Okay? And then the rest is this. Okay, it's uh, pinky on 10 on the B string, then on 11 on the B string, along with an open E bass. You slide it to 12, so it's and then 11, 10, pull off to 8. Okay, so. Okay, that's the melody. Um, the first lick of the melody. Okay, Chad Atkins leaves this note out, the, the B octave, and just plays this. Okay, you can play it if you want, um, but as I said, I like to stick to the original whenever possible. So, okay, so together um, with the chords, it sounds like this. Okay, and then B minor seven again. And then this. Um, okay, this is where trouble ensues, and this becomes um, this becomes a, a, a genius arrangement because uh, Chad Atkins keeps the the five four going, the five four chord picking going while playing the melody. Um, so, let's try to dissect it. You play this, both E strings, and then you need this. So you play strings two and three, and then the E minor again. Bass, rest of the strings. So, E strings, two and three, bass, rest of the strings. Um, and then this. You bar the seventh fret and you pick strings two and six, uh, strings B and the E bass uh, on B. So this is how it sounds at first, and then you hammer on seven, uh, you hammer on eight on the B string and you pick it off. So you hammer on and pull it off. Okay? Okay, along with the B bass. And then you put on the third finger and the pinky on nine and nine on the A string and the G string. Uh, turning this into a B, a B7 sus4 shape. This is not the chord. The chord, of course, is B minor seven uh, with this melody. Okay, so um, it, it's not the chord. It's just the shape. So um, it's this. Okay, you put it on. You pick strings um, G, D, and A, strings three, four, and five, on nine, seven, and nine, 
and then you pull the pinky off. Okay, from nine to seven. And then this again. Okay, so together it sounds like this. Got it? Slower. So along with the melody. Concept is the same concept, but it goes down one string to the bass ear notes, and then it's this. Okay, it's this. So, um, you um, again, you bar the seven, and you pick the B bass along with the G string, third string, and you hammer on the nine and pull it off with your pinky or with your third finger whichever is comfortable for you okay and then you put on both third finger and the pinky on nine and nine on the a and d strings completing a b minor shape okay b minor regular b minor and you pull off the pinky from the nine to the seven on the G uh, the G string this time, okay? Um, no, the D, the D string, the G string was before, the, the D string, okay? So, got it? And you, you pick strings uh, A and D together, nine and nine, and then you pull off the pinky, okay? So, and then you play the E bass with the B string, and then Chad Atkins does something really nice. This. Um, it's, just, it's just a nice um, addition, a nice addition to the uh, E minor um, chord, because this is E minor. So it just, it just uh, played with it a little. So um, B and E, and then seven on the D string, nine on the A string, and you pick strings um, A, D, and G, because you picked the E bass already. Here, remember? So you pick this. Okay, nine, seven, and zero on A, D, and G. And then you take this shape to uh, two, two frets back, to five and seven, and you pick uh, the E bass and strings five, four, and three again. Okay? So together it sounds like this. And the whole thing, and then you play this again. Okay? Now remember this, we're gonna call this lick A. call this lick B. Okay? Um, you'll see why in a minute. Let me just play everything from the top so you can hear how it goes. Lick A. Lick B. Then lick A again. Okay? Now, second time around, you play the melody. And then you just reverse the licks. You play lick B, lick A, lick B. why we call it lick A and lick B because you don't have to relearn it you just have to reverse it that's the whole thing you uh, the whole A part okay so you pick uh, you pick the melody actually first you pick the chords then the melody line along with lick A B A then the melody again then B A B okay 
Uh, I hope you're following up till now because now comes the B part. The B part played slowly goes like this. Okay, let's, um, I'll play it and I'll read out the bass notes because it's, um, it's what's called a two, five, one, um, a two, five, one sequence. Uh, um, it's, it's a, it's a jazz cliche. It's, it's a sequence of chords, uh, that lead into one another because it's, I don't want to get too much into theory here, but it uses the circle of fourths. The circle of fourths is a formula to lead chords into another. It's okay, so uh, let's not get into it. Just if somebody asks you, what are you doing there? Just say, the circle of fourths. Uh, or I'm playing two five ones. Uh, and then it'll sound like you know what you're doing. Um, um, that's what I do. I don't really know what I'm doing. So the bass notes are A, D, G, E. Okay, from G to E, it's not uh, a fourth, but uh, the E leads back to A. Um, so, and then uh, D again, G. And then D again, but the D is um, within the G chord, so it harmonizes the G. I'm just explaining what's going on bass-wise. And then A again, D, uh, G, E, A, and then D, then B, um, Okay, um, now this is Chad Atkins' arrangement. In the original, at the ending there, there's an F, um, there's an F sharp uh, minor sus four. So it's um, um, okay, and then it leads to uh, B because F sharp and B are two, five, two, E, because it's, okay, um, again, let's not get into it, but um, I'm leaving the F sharp out because, again, this is a guitar arrangement and uh, I've tried the F sharp um, minor seven or B, uh, B sus four don't sound right on guitar, so let's leave it out, so if, some kind of jazz artsy fartsy guy um, or girl tell you there's a chord missing there. Um, say yeah, I know the F sharp. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't want to play it. And that's it. If they give you trouble, walk away. So okay, um, let's begin. If you've noticed, these are arpeggios. This is an A. A minor arpeggio, uh, then it's a G arpeggio, and then it's um, A minor arpeggio again, okay? And then, um, <laughs> so it's arpeggios, and then it's just arpeggios, chromatic click, arpeggio, chromatic click, arpeggio, chromatic click. Uh, always try to see what you play, to understand what you're playing. Uh, if not, I'm here to help. So, um, I'm gonna stop talking now and teach. Okay, so you begin with artificial, um, no, it's not artificial, artificial is this. I, um, natural harmonics on 12. It's E minor again. Um, so after you're done with the second melody line, um, you do this. Okay, it's just natural harmonics on 12. You pick the sixth string, then strings one, two, and three. Now, this. Okay, 
12, 15, 12 on the E string, 14, uh, 13 on the B string. 14 would make it A major. This is a, a minor, so, okay, it's 12, 15, 12 on the E string, 13 on the B string with the A bass. Okay, along with the first E note, with the first 12. And then, okay, it's uh, the D bass along with 10 on the B string. And then on the B string, 12, 13, 14, chromatic movement. And then G string along with uh, 10 on the E string. And the arpeggio is this, it's 10, 14, with your pinky, 10, 14, 10, and then 12 on the B string, then, um, I forgot something, um, you harmonize when you play the D, let's go back, you've got A minor, and then you've got this. You don't have to harmonize, but you can, so if you want, uh, you put 11 on the G string and 10 on the B string, and you just harmonize the D chord, okay, because this is D, so you can do that. And then continue with the chromatic movement, okay, and then the G. Now, E minor, harmonized, uh, it's 8 on the B string, along with the E bass, and if you want to harmonize, you add 9 on the D string, okay, to make it an E minor chord sound, instead of just a melody and the bass, but it's, uh, it's good either way. Or then it's a chromatic movement again, it's 10, 11, 12 on the B string. And then A minor again, this time a different arpeggio. It's 8, 12, 8 on the E string, uh, 10 on the B string. And then this. Um, I knew I wouldn't make it because it's really confusing to play slowly, uh, especially when it comes to chromatics. D along with 11 on the G string and then 12 on the G string. Okay, so it's 11, 12 on the G string and then 10, 11 on the B string. So it's and then 12 on the B string with the G string open, okay? And then this, another chromatic movement, 11, 12, 13 on the B string and then 15. So it's 11, 12, 13, 15. So, got it? And then you play D bass, 15 on the B string again. So it sounds like this. And then again, A minor, D, G, E. I'm not harmonizing on purpose so you can hear the melody. Um, A, and this time a different ending. The different ending is this. Okay? Um, it's uh, the same beginning of the ending. It's uh, 11, 12 on the G string with the D bass. But this time it's 10 and 8 on the E string. Um, so it's. 
and then you put on a B chord, a B major chord, and you do this. You play both E strings on seven, and you play strings A, D, and G, and then the bass and A, D, and G again. Okay? And then you turn it into B minor seven again. You take second finger and the pinky off, and you play this again. Okay, you play the bass and strings A, D, and G, and you're back to the uh, to the beginning. Okay, you just begin with this. Remember that. Uh, picking the E minor as, a, uh, as an end to a melody. Uh, both E strings, rest of the chord, um, strings two and three, and then the chord again. Okay, so the ending. top. Slowly, let's play the, the, um, uh, the B part. There's a C part ahead, we're not done, uh, but the C part relative to this is the easiest thing you've ever played. So, um, B part. <laughs> So um, three and five on the E string and B string respectively. Three on the E string, five on the B string. Um, and you play this. Okay, you just pick the E bass and pick three and five. And then you move them up to five and seven and add this, add the B bass. Seven on the E string. And then you do this. And then seven and eight on the E and B strings. And again with the E bass. Twice. Then the same thing. Five and seven with uh, the B bass. This, by the way, is B, um, is B um, minor seven. Um, it's not, if you add the major note, it's a major seven, it's, it's not a major seven, it's a seven, um, a major seven would be this, but in this, if you add the minor note, it's a minor seven, this is a voicing, but, uh, contextually, the ear up till now is already um, familiar with the fact that it's a B minor seven throughout the piece. So when you play this, the ear hears a B minor seven chord. Uh, this is actually B five 
seven because it's without the third note of the chord. Just want to make sure you know what you're playing uh, because that's my job. I'm here to teach uh, and that's knowledge. So. Got it? Three and five, five and seven, seven and eight, uh, five and seven. Okay? So three, five, five, seven, seven, eight, uh, five, seven. And then it's back to three and five, but this time you bar the third fret and you play a C bass. Okay? Making it a C major chord. Then uh, it's two and three with the B bass, making it a B minor chord. Okay, it's two and three with the B bass. You bar the second fret. And then A minor. Okay, it's just zero on the E string, one on the B string with the A bass. And then G. It's three on the B string and an open G string this time, along with the G bass. Okay, so it's G5 because there's no major or minor note here. Okay, it's just G and D, um, the G and D notes, it's this. Okay, it's, it's, a, it's a five chord, it's a power chord. Uh, so from the top, uh, three and five, B minor seven, five and seven, uh, E minor again, seven and eight, it's E minor, it's these notes. This is by the way E minor as well because D minor shaped, you take D minor up and you've got, you've got E minor. Okay, so this is E minor. So. Then C, uh, B minor, 3 and 5, 2 and 3, A minor, 0 and 1, G5, and then F sharp, uh, sus4. Remember I told you about the F sharp? Here it is. Okay, um, it's the F sharp bass, you bar the second, you bar the second uh, fret, pinky and third finger on four and four on the uh, G and D, the third and fourth strings, and you pick this. And then B minor, you pick uh, strings five, and then two and three, and then this again, and then A. Okay, you pick um, the A bass, Two and two on strings two and three. And then E minor again. B minor again. Um, e minor again. A, mi A again. E minor again. Then the melody resumes. Um, Chad Atkins, I believe, picks the... Um, the B minor and A just once. I think he plays it like this. But um, you can have another round and just play uh, B minor, E minor, A, E minor twice. Um, and he also bends the the uh, two and the the, um, the second and third string on three and four uh, from the B minor. He just bends them a little for a little kick. So um, okay, just. Bend them. 
Uh, Alright, before you go, practice this. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I've got a ton of lessons up already and I take requests. As you see, this was a request and um, uh, these lessons are free and will always be free. Uh, you can go download the tab also for free on the website. Um, and while you're there, there's a donation button. If you want to give something back, I'd be very, very grateful for any donation whatsoever. And I thank you in advance for making a donation. Um, now, everything, of course, goes back to Lick and Ref to making these lessons. I'm working on a beginner series uh, as well on a technique series, lessons to uh, master classes, uh, theory lessons. I'm working on an extensive, an extensive uh, master class. Uh, on everything you ever wanted to know about guitar and every donation would help me uh, continue to produce it and make those lessons um, because this isn't my day job yet uh, and I don't have a lot of time to make lessons and the more donations the more free time I can make to make more lessons my goal is to make a new lesson every day uh, that's my goal and I'd be very grateful uh, if you can help me achieve it. Uh, anyway, go practice this. Get it under your fingers. This is an amazing arrangement. This is a terrific piece of music uh, and a great, great uh, composition by Dave Brubeck. Uh, if you don't know the original, go listen to it right now. The, the saxophone playing by Paul Desmond is out of this world. Uh, Thanks for watching this, enjoy, uh, and uh, go practice. I'll see you in the next lesson.